Easy Crew back once again with another Akai video. As promised, I said I was going to do another Akai video, and today I'm going to do the Akai S5000, and we're talking about the RAS SCSI compatibility on this machine. I went online, had a little look around, and I couldn't see any information as to whether this worked with the Akai S5000. So guys, um, I decided to put together a video, show you it all working, show you the results, and I can confirm 100% now that the RAS SCSI does actually work with the Akai S5000 it's pretty flawless and um yeah, uh, my last test I did it on the S3000, that was working really well. So I hit the lab here, experimenting with the S5000, the Akai S5000, that is sampler, hardware sampler for those who don't know what that is. And I was able to uh, experiment and get it to work. Now, I'm gonna show you sort of like a few things uh, that I've noticed and a few notes to selfies, uh, but just wanted to confirm for people, it does actually work. I was able to, um, copy a compact flash disk, copy some files to it in FAT32 mode, so I formatted it as a FAT32 um, uh, drive, uh, copied some WAV files to it, and it worked really well. Uh, the only thing is with it is the samples had to be 16-bit. They wouldn't work with 32-bit. I don't think 32-bit think samples were around it, when this sample was made. Uh, comment, comment down below, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and let me know what experience any of you guys have had with the Akai S5000. Uh, I've got another video that I'm gonna be doing, uh, it, which is in relation to the Zulu SCSI. I've ordered one of those from Amiga Kit. I'm waiting for that to turn up. As soon as it comes in, uh, we're gonna be using that. So I'm looking real forward to getting that off the ground and showing you stuff. Guys, if you're getting anything out of these videos, uh, please smash the like button and consider subscribing to the channel because I, up, up, I upload a lot of videos about retro gear and all that kind of good stuff as well as video tutorials on how to make tunes or in Renoise and all different types of DAOs. So don't miss out on that, you know, turn on notifications when I go live, uh, etc. as well. We do the dub plate wars live sessions as well where you can send in your tracks and you can do dub plates, etc. for those of you who are not uh, regulars of this channel. Anyway, with that being said, uh, the Akai S5000 uh, works pretty much flawlessly with the RAS SCSI and I'm looking forward to showing you uh, what I found. So without further ado, let's get into it. So guys, as you can see, I've got my Akai S5000 uh, switched off at the moment. And as you can see down here, uh, I've got the RAS SCSI switched on. It's all powered on and I've connected it through the DB25 cable, which goes round the back into the RAS SCSI, uh, sorry, into the Akai S5000. So I'm gonna set this up here for you guys to have a quick look at it and see what's going on. Next, I just power on over here and then it will power on. This is once, provided you've been through all of the, the setup and uh, the whole setup procedure, there's loads of tutorials on there. And uh, I did mention how to get this uh, going in my previous video. Uh, but this is just a brief overview of it working on the S5000, what to expect. You see it booting up and you see it's found another disc here, as you can see. Um, and that disc is actually the RAS SCSI. Now, while the RAS SCSI is working, it will have some flickering lights, etc. Uh, now, to get it moving, all you got to do is just press your, you know, any button on your S5000, and it'll kick in. And then you go to your utilities. Uh, you go to your disc, the utilities over here, and it will show you a disc list and you can see that you've got that FAT32 there and that is basically a image that I've loaded on my RAS SCSI software. So you go to the RAS SCSI so uh, interface, the web interface, and you load the image that you want to use on the interface. And then once you've done that, it will show up here. It's really mad. Now, another thing I've got to mention is this is connected via ethernet. Um, you can have your Raspberry Pi set up through Wi-Fi, uh, just to make life simple. Um, I've just connected an Ethernet cable and run that down underneath the, the mat or whatever, straight to my network. You can have it set up next to your rack or however you want to do it. So then your uh, Raspberry is connected and in theory your sampler is kind of connected to your network. And then all you do is just transfer the disk images and then you save to them. So if I show you here... Uh, I'll click that, select the disk, and look, it will select the disk, and all of this is actually the disk image on the RAS SCSI. You can load to it, you can save to it. There's lots that you can actually do, which is really cool. Uh, let's see if 
I'll get you right in there a little bit more on the screen, get you a better shot. Yeah, so as you can see, batteries are running out, so that kind of sucks. But yeah, as you can see, it's all working. Uh, and as usual, you can go to like, say different folders, open folder, you can audition samples, uh, you can load them as you would as if it was a disc. So I've selected that disc now, so I just go to there uh, and I could just go, uh, for example, load program, hit execute, program load complete. Uh, you can audition samples. There's not much to that, but yeah, let's see. Go back, close folder. Uh, let's go back to that. I've got name in folder here somewhere. Let's scroll down to that. Close folder. Oh yeah, this is, hold on, disk list. Hold on one second. Get out of there, I mean, look what I mean. All right, select disk, right, there you go. Pop that in there. Go to me, amen, uh, open folder. Press audition. And there you have it. So it's loading samples. You can, or you can load the entire folder if you want. You can see the load speed as well. It loads quite quickly. It's like loading like at hard drive speed, which is really really cool. You know. Uh, and then the same goes for saving as well. You just go to save. You can save your entire memory to say a folder. Uh, I would go to view disk. Obviously select your folder first of all. Uh, let's see. Save. Uh, close folder yeah you can use your ascii keyboard and all that to save as well set that up to sort of name the folder before you save and keep it all you know nice and neat by going new folder you know and then you just call it whatever test or whatever see so if you've got the ascii keyboard you could use it like that hit the yes button now let's go to uh, enter yes where we already do this again right there we go so we've got a new sample folder and then we just go uh, save sample execute all samples go and you can see look it's saved back just as quick as what as what it loads and to be honest just me showing you the, the speed so you can see how fast it loads etc uh, just make sure all your samples are 16 bit and uh, you're good to go you probably want to experiment with the terminator i believe the terminator on that one is on uh, on my uh, ras scuzzy and that is it guys that's simple plain and simple as that uh, I find that this is a little bit more reliable than the um, SCSI to SD. The SCSI to SD tends to be a bit delicate on how you configure it. But once this is configured, uh, it seems to work lovely. So, um, that's all I've got for you guys. It works. Uh, just wanted to put that out there. You guys can see it working. Um, check out my other videos I've got on the S5000. I'll show a demonstration of it all working if you want to see that all you know, up and running. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's it for this quick little demo of the lovely little raw SCSI. Up next, we're going to have the Zulu SCSI. I want to compare that. That's looking quite interesting for the sampler as well. Just waiting for Amiga Kit to send that through. So guys, that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed it. Please like, share, subscribe. Take care. God bless. Peace.